Hi everyone, so today we're going to going, be going through a 2020 election prediction between Andrew Yang of New York, the entrepreneur from New York, and Donald Trump, the incumbent president and also businessman from New York. So this would be the second time where both candidates come from the same state and uh, effectively also the second time where both candidates uh, come from the same state, but it's in two years in a row since that happened in 2016. And in 2020, if Andrew Yang does, in fact, become the Democratic nominee for president and he does not change his, uh, you know, statehood, I guess. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to be going through this potential 2020 matchup between Donald Trump and Andrew Yang. So Andrew Yang, it's really very difficult to judge how he's going to do on this electoral map it, because we have never really seen a candidate like him ever before i mean we don't know is he going to appeal to the rust belt or could he appeal to really rural states or is it going to be a blowout for trump we don't really know and so unlike most other candidates that have already kind of been tested or a similar candidate to them has already been tested someone like you know Bernie Sanders, who's run before, Joe Biden, who's run before, Elizabeth Warren, who, yes, she hasn't run before, but most people know who she is, and um, we've seen similar candidates to Elizabeth Warren, you know, we've seen we've seen stuff like that, but for Andrew Yang, no one like this has ever run, so we don't know if he's going to be successful or not successful, will, he, will it be a blowout for him, and he might win really rural states, really Republican states, and Trump just gets decimated, or is it the other way, and Andrew Yang can't appeal to many people. So, in order to uh, help me make some of these calculations, we're going to be using some of the most recent polling data that we've been seeing between Andrew Yang and Donald Trump. This is the latest polls from 538, and honestly, these should not be... She, these should definitely be taken with a grain of salt, uh, definitely, because Andrew Yang, yes, he is losing to Trump by 8, by 12, by 12, and by 11, right, uh, by 8, by, uh, by, uh, Trump is, would be at 35, Andrew Yang is at 37, um, right, that's, that's one of the polls, uh, and then, but if you look at many of the others, right, uh, Harris X, all of these are Harris X, but anyway, uh, Andrew Yang isn't doing too well, and if you actually do do the math and calculate the average of these, uh, numbers, 8, 12, 12, and 11, you get 10 and 3 quarters, Trump on average leading by 10.75 percentage points over Andrew Yang, but it's, again, very, uh, important to note that Trump uh, again, uh, n n n there, still Trump has a very low number, Andrew Yang also has an even lower number, and so we don't see uh, Andrew Yang doing too well in those polling data. Uh, but, uh, okay, uh, but yeah, so overall, yes, that's, that's what, that's what we are, we are seeing with Andrew Yang. But, uh, again, since we don't have any other data, I'm kind of forced to rely on the polls. We've never seen someone like this. So, uh, yeah, let's go through this potential election map. So, safe states for Andrew Yang. Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, uh, sorry, New Mexico moves into the likely column, Illinois, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, the District of Columbia, New York, all move into the safe, uh, safe Andrew Yang column. As for Trump... Alaska, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, most of Nebraska, Kansas, Louisiana, Texas moves into the safe column in this case, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana, and that second district in the state of Maine. So, 187 for Andrew Yang and 164 for Donald Trump. Um... So let's go th uh, go through this potential election scenario. Trump right now is behind, so where can he catch up to Yang? He can catch up in the second district of Nebraska. We see uh, Donald Trump winning in that second district. Uh, we also see him winning in the south. We don't see Andrew Yang exciting the voter base there. So uh, we actually see uh, Donald Trump narrowly taking the states of Florida, 
Georgia, and North Carolina. So that gets Trump up to 225. Reasoning for these states, all of these states, especially Florida, Democrats did not do as well here in the midterms. Again, Andrew, a candidate like Andrew Yang has not been tested. So it's actually very difficult for us to fill in this electoral map. And so I'm just basing it off these polls, which are very likely not uh, going to be the actual result. Uh, but we don't have any data to back this off. We don't have any historical data to back this off. And so it's it's very difficult to fill in this potential 2020 election scenario. Okay, so right now Donald J. Trump is at 200 and 25 electoral college votes. Andrew Yang right now, 187 electoral uh, electoral votes. And, and so we see, um, and so we see Trump uh, in the lead right now uh, at, at this point in time in the electoral college. Um, and, but yeah, let's just continue it down this map. Um, yeah, so Florida, Georgia, North Carolina all move into the Andrew Yang column. In the state of Virginia, we still see this one narrowly moving into the Yang column. Um, so yeah, Andrew Yang narrowly wins in Virginia. But Trump, we see him actually taking the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we don't see Andrew Yang uh, doing it too well there. Uh, and then as for Maine, though, that one still moves into the Andrew Yang column. So... 203 electoral votes for Andrew Yang, 299 for Donald Trump. The Southwest is an area where I don't see Andrew Yang having too much success here in terms of um, of, of the margins. So Trump we see easily taking the state of Arizona. We don't see Andrew Yang's message resonating in Arizona. Uh, in the state of Nevada, we see the state of Nevada. This one, it's, it's very difficult to say. We do see Trump, though. It's, it's very difficult to say. I'm going to give Andrew Yang the benefit of the doubt here just because he is a Democrat and in this polarized time, I think, you know, with the Democrat success in the recent elections here, I, I think Andrew Yang could, um, could push himself over the line in Nevada and then Colorado, of course, moving into the leaning Democratic column. So again, Southwest is an area where we don't see Andrew Yang having as much success as perhaps some Democrats could. Okay, so uh, final little bit in the Midwest. In the Midwest, Trump right now at 240 electoral votes. Andrew Yang right now at 218. Whoops. Uh, Trump, we see taking the state of Ohio. Right. Pretty, uh, not necessarily the biggest surprise, Trump taking Ohio. I mean, you know, Trump won it in 2016. Uh, Democrats uh, didn't do, do too well. Didn't do, didn't do too well in 2018 here. Ohio moves into the Trump column. Okay, Iowa, we see also this one moving into the Trump column. But Andrew Yang, we see narrowly taking the state of Minnesota. We see it being competitive enough to move it into the leaning Democratic column. Okay, 264 for Donald Trump, 228 for Andrew Yang. Again, it's very difficult to be able to fill in this potential hypothetical uh, 2020 election scenario. Um, right now, as a net, Trump has picked up the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I believe that's it. Um, so, Andrew Yang, we see... We see him narrowly taking the state of Michigan. We see it being very, very competitive, but we see his message resonating well enough with the with the working class there, uh, just to get him over the line very narrowly in Michigan. But we don't see it being enough in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, which hands Trump the victory, seals the deal at 294 electoral votes for Donald Trump and 244 for Andrew Yang. Thank you for watching this video. Comment down your suggestions below and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.